game one. Team Secret decided to ban out the Darkseer first phase and pick up the Tree and Protector for themselves, who uh, was previously in that Darkseer ban slot. Ten seconds remaining. Yeah, I'm actually super surprised by how the, the drop is open. Because uh, I expected a Tusk first ban from Navi. Oh my god, they're dropping so fast. Uh, team Secret went to Tree, like you mentioned. Uh, Navi counter with Magnus CM. CM has been very popular, and Navi gonna go with another attempt in the Magnus. I'm, I'm kind of thinking it's gonna be general this time, and CK gonna go with uh, Yep. So it's probably best hero after Tusk. Let's mm -hmm. let's make that his best hero now after these few games he's played on it, and it's pretty good against Magnus. It makes it forces so Magnus tight. to think more about how he plays, which is. Which is always something that's nice, and then you can also steal freezing, uh, freezing field, which we saw last game, I think, uh, actually. So, which did a lot of impact in that fight. So, a bit of a new draft, and we're gonna see if uh, Navi adapts a bit better, maybe, to Secrets uh, draft. Is definitely a set of support heroes that, you know, if MP has at all an aggressive slanted hero, that they could uh, apply some of that pressure towards that safe lane. Like, unlike a CM, Rubik can actually lane. Decently from the very early onsets, Tree Protector as well, very, very assertive in his harassment. Compared to Tusk, who typically tends to be uh, a little bit more passive, just doesn't have as much damage. Of course, doesn't have that, uh, that Leech Seed nor the Element of Surprise from the Invisibility. So, it does open up Secret's lanes a little bit as to, uh, as to how they want to run things. If It does seem like, for Secret, MP is usually getting the short end of the stick. I don't know if it's just the games I've seen. But they typically tend to get uh, MP a little bit under foreign because they're trying to use him very offensively early on to try to stop something that the enemies are trying to pull off. And, and again, this this opening is definitely conducive to that. But uh, for Navi, Magnus, Crystal Maiden, now the Tusk banned out. It's about time the Tusk is receiving some hate. I think that hero is, is actually kind of broken right now. But uh, either way, CM Magnus, definitely a very uh, generic opening for Navi. And as you said, General may be playing the Magnus here, but uh, the beauty of Magnus, especially with Navi, is that you know, they could really give him to, to anyone for any role. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a pretty versatile hero, or relatively versatile at least. And it's also kind of nice with CM when you put it offlane. Uh, so you kind of have more spell mobility. So you, like when you're mid, you can go bottle. So you kinda, you're kind of like getting the runes and you can kind of sustain well. But on offlane, you're like, I can't actually spam Shockwave for last hits. But Crystal Maiden helps a lot with that. Team they're gonna go with Ogre. This is not the most common hero. It, it's seen here and there, but definitely uh, not as common as it once was. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's still pretty strong. I'm not sure if it's like certain matchup, like let's say Ogre kind of wrecks Treant in a roaming matchup, as in like Treant can't really kill people when Five Ogre is even close. Remaining. One big thing, though, which I think is the main thing, actually, about uh, what Ogre can abuse, is that Treant is garbage at helping mid. Because there's no trees, you know, in the mid lane. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, not, there's nothing to actually hit people from. And Ogre is actually one of the best, if not the best, mid zoning hero. Uh, he is very tanky. He can actually just start right-clicking under the tower. And he's like, well, I'm going to regen this and have my six armor, I think it is. So it doesn't really matter. Uh, so that's a nice advantage now we're gonna get. So that's also why I think it's gonna be an offlane mag because you don't wanna you wanna give mag that much space generally. Like it's better to give it to another hero that skills better. The ogre magic will also have that ignite to try to cut through that tree and protector living armor and uh, together with the crystal maiden sums up to a, uh, a very deadly roaming duo when they actually have level three, level four on the CM. Just so much lockdown, so much sticking power. Team Secret, though, they're going to look to get some disengage power, uh, unless they decide to throw a curveball here. This is looking like it's going to be uh, an off-lane shaker here yeah, for Team Secret, or, or a safe lane shaker with an offensive try lane. Uh, it does seem like that is perfectly viable here as well. What are your thoughts on the shaker? I think this hero is uh, is definitely situational, but if you expect the enemy side to be going for a bunch of melee heroes or a tusk, or it seems like this strategy, like this steroid type plan, I think this is an all-star pick. I mean, the hero is great, but the problem is getting the blink in time. That's like his main issue. That's almost always been, I think. And I'm I'm always worried when I see this hero. I love playing the hero. It's so fun to watch as well. And uh, But I, I'm always worried about getting that decent blink timing on the shaker and maybe getting that first uh, echo slam or like 
when you hit six, you kind of want to get a kill with Echo Slam somehow. It's kind of hard to make. But then also when you get to blink, the first Echo Slam has to be pretty impactful. Otherwise, you you're gonna struggle a bit. And uh, also when it's offlane, it's kind of hard to choose what to skill. I think uh, it's all three skills are kind of important. You can't mm -hmm. really skip one, so you kind of need a lot of levels. And uh, if you get a late blink and you have a low level Fisher, this hero is kind of it, it's pretty bad now. But if if you go a high points in Fisher, you pick. might not do as much later. So it's a bit awkward when it comes to skilling this hero. I think. Yeah, you pretty much described a carry hero, just like a hero that needs a lot of gold really quickly for that blink dagger, needs to get those levels as well early on, but is often not going to give that, not going to be receiving that much farm priority, and that that therein lies the risk of the Earthshaker. Now with the Tree of Protector, at least ideally for Team Secret, they'll be able to uh, give Earthshaker a little bit of a safer time here. So you know, banking on a kind of a mediocre uh, timing on that blink dagger is, is just fine if. You're playing that Shaker. But Navi, they're going to pick up the Juggernaut. A, a pretty easy pick, I would say, with the Ogre Magi and the Magnus. So you get the Bloodlust and the Cleave. Uh, at least if you can't get your hands on the Troll Warlord, who was, uh, of course, banned out by Team Secret. So Navi have a, you know, a pretty nice shell to work around with this Juggernaut. But Secret, they have a Terror Blade. And as far as offensive trilanes go, Terror Blade, Grubic, Tree and Protector, I would be scared of that. That is definitely a, a real possibility now for Secret. Secrets turn to yeah, ban. for sure. There's still a Ricky and Boundary. No, actually, Ricky got banned. Okay, it was the first time. That's why I kind of miss him. But uh, I was one thinking now we could actually pick those four. So that was not happening from the beginning. But so I'm just gonna skip what I was gonna say. Jagger is a nice pick remain. though for Navi because it can be both mid and carry. And uh, I'm not remain. sure if Secret plays terribly mid. It's it's been here and there. But I'm assuming it's going to be MP, and I'm, I'm also thinking they're going to go on aggro trail lane. I think that's the best decision for them. Mm -hmm. And then pick a mid that does well. Unfortunately, they're not going to be able to choose the matchup. That's going to be Navi, because they have the last pick. So they kind of need to pick a more open mid lane, and that doesn't get countered. And I think the Lina might be the best option. Ten seconds now, remaining. it's one of the strongest mid heroes, and it's it's a uh, fifth pick, Lina. That doesn't Team happen that often. Turn to pick. Well, Tinker ban out uh, is. I mean, for Lina, there's usually just very few bad matchups, like 50% at worst, it seems. Uh, Tinker ban out, and oh. that is the exact opposite of a Lina. That's a bristleback pick for Team Secret right there. Is it actually oh going to be Terrorblade God. mid? If it is. I, I don't know what's happening. I mean, this this is gonna be a might be a carry shaker at this point. Ten seconds. I feel like in Secret played Bristol a few times, but it's yeah. always been Kessu, right? Five I don't think anyone remaining. else played it, but I'm not sure. I cannot say that for certain. Reserve. Well, at least in a vacuum for Team Secret, this Bristleback is gonna have a, a lot of stun support behind him, which is of course very nice when you're just looking to uh, kind of extend the fights and get more stacks of your quills and your snot out there. Navi though, oh this is this is gonna be a rough oh. game. Navi pick up the one of the best heroes to have versus the Bristleback in that yeah, Legion Commander, nice. forces the Bristleback to show his face to you, so you can get all your damage done very cleanly. Is gonna be once again Magnus uh, given over towards Dendi, but uh, I really like this last pick for Navi. I mean, I'm not really sure what this plan for Team Secret is, but hey, if you just look at the matchups, Legion is really great up against Bristleback, really good up against the Terror Blade. A lot of stuns that you could purge off as well. Seems like uh, it's a little bit of a surprise actually that Legion Commander got this far in the draft. Yeah, definitely a bit uh, a bit unique there, being a lost pick. Generally picked in the first phase, and maybe even more so banned in the first phase. So, uh, pretty rare to see this. However, secret lanes are gonna be uh, terribly in mid, which I think is is decent. Ogre roam mid is gonna be a bit hard against a terribly who has very high armor himself and also high damage. But I still think you can you can probably force a uh, meta, and then be a bit passive and then zone uh, other times. And I think that's gonna be a very nice uh, matchup for uh, for Navi in the mid lane. I don't think it would have been nicer to have like a more pressure hero that with more kill potential maybe than a jugger like lena for example like i mentioned earlier but jugger is a pretty good pick and i think they're gonna win the match mid matchup it's hard for pop to do anything however actually i wonder if 
Yeah, they're swapping. They're swapping already, actually. So they're still changing it because I was thinking they mm. should go the Terrorblade aggro, but the players are not matched up. But they swapped right before we got into the loading screen. Oh, damn, man, I didn't see that one. I didn't see it load in either. Okay, well, uh, we'll see. We'll see as we uh, have to obviously go through the Team Tower showdown. Can't miss that. But, uh, you know, it is, of course, up in the air as to what Secret want to do. Dendi on that Magnus still can go into really any lane they desire. So what, so what do we have here? We have Midwan picking up the... Wow, that is a sick bristle back skin. We have Keizu on the Shaker and MP on the Terrorblade. So, you know, Terrorblade, fairly standard. Earthshaker, fairly standard. Ultimately just going to be a, a, a mid lane for the Bristleback that Na'Vi will have, again, pretty okay matchups with, but is it really going to be a Magnus versus Bristle mid lane? <laughs> I, I have never seen this before, but I can only assume that with the Ogre oh and the God. CM who are willing to rotate in, that Bristleback should be uh, you know, having an okay lane with the Quill Spray and being able to get the CS that way, but not really going to be dominating it. Yeah, I mean, this is some really interesting laning. I think that there might still be swaps incoming, though. Like, I, I'm not sure if this lens has been uh, settled by uh, teams uh, yet. Uh, I want to see Kessu starting at Okay, he has a Quelling Blade. Kind of unique. This hero is not the most common, so I'm uh, kind of interested how he, how he lanes it and like what he buys at the start. It seems like he has a Quelling Blade. I'm not sure if there's like, a specific purpose for this. It seems a bit odd, but I'm gonna be looking a bit again to that, see what he's doing. How are the boundaries on Echo is contesting? I think he's gonna force a lift away. The battle begins. Well, I mean, it's get a lift away or get a bounty rune. Either one is good for him. He's gonna take a little bit of damage, but Ogre Magi, we all know, has uh, infinite armor, so a couple of right clicks not really gonna bother him all that much. And it does seem like it's just going to be, at least from the secret side, uh, the lanes that we previously s described. No offensive tri lane here. Uh, and on the other end, PyCat gonna go towards south lane as the Juggernaut. Has a good matchup versus Earthshaker, but uh, Shaker should be just fine in this lane. Like, really, really high experience levels on this Shaker. And over towards mid lane, we already see mid one. Dodging a skewer out from Dendi. That is definitely a threat when you're talking about a mid lane mag. But up towards top lane, we have a little bit of a mess brewing. MP. Gonna go into super demon form oh, onto the Ogre Magi. Oh. Eight armor, is that strong enough? It seems like no! Oh, they can't get him. Eight armor is good enough, it turns out, and Ogre Magi, level one, is unkillable. Confirmed. Oh, Soneko, a math genius right there. For sure. That was calculated. I, I believe in Soneko right there. But uh, that's pretty good. Uh, MP forced to use an early meta and uh, not getting a kill, so that's gonna be a good lane later on for uh, Navi when this meta ends, which is like 10 seconds. Uh, mid lane, I think mid one is gonna do great here. Uh, already then missing the skewer is kind of painful, you know. Uh, doesn't have the shockwave point, so it's gonna be a bit hard for him, I think. They're kind of greeting mid with young lane, so I'm gonna see what he does later on. And bottom lane, it seems like Kess is doing fine. I thought he was gonna struggle a little bit because he went the uh, Quelling Blade and not a Stout, you know, so he can't trade. But it seems to be working out. Oh, MP body blocking for Puppy. General has another overwhelming odds in five seconds, but I don't think that's even going to be enough to get the kill. They'll throw an ignite towards the Absor, but that clarity was running out anyway, so it doesn't really do all that much. Everyone from Secret Top Lane will be just fine. And the Quelling Blade on the Shaker definitely is interesting, but uh, if you're just going to go in this matchup, you do have to worry about the spin, that is definitely a threat for the Shaker's life, but just being able to have that, uh, that extra damage. Oh, Puppy! Almost dying to the overwhelming odds, then almost dying to the neutrals, but we'll survive both of them. And we'll get the bounty rune in the end, okay. No, no nothing gonna happen up towards top lane. Uh, is gonna let Shaker farm really, really well on this bottom lane. I mean, you were, you were talking about getting experience on a Shaker and then kind of making these skill selections. He's gonna have free experience, he's gonna have almost complete free farm on this bottom lane. This is going to be, like, the ideal version of Earthshaker right here. Yeah, I wonder what he's gonna... Oh, he's doing some cute stuff now. I'm, I wanna see what he's doing here. He's definitely trying to do something. He's gonna lead the creeps towards some neutrals. Oh, stuck, though. Is, it, is this the plan? I think he... Chop, chop, and... Yeah, did not work. The creeps used to, like, slide off the fissure there, but, uh... You know what? He, he's down a little bit of mana. Still creep waves are coming into his tower since it's just PyCat's jug by himself. And uh, you can't control all the pulls and whatnot, so... 
It's a little bit of mana wasted, but it's uh, far from the end of the world. It does seem like we're having a, a pretty even early game exchange where the mid lane is, is almost completely a wash. And, uh, well, for right now, General maybe not getting as much as the uh, off lane of Secret, but he will soon have that Secret weapon in the CM. Still farming the jungle right now, but hits that magic level 3 mark and uh, is ready to, at least in theory, make some rotations, but you really do have to try to force out or bait out a metamorphosis beforehand if you're going to go towards top lane or you know, try to soften up mid one before you help out Dendi, because Dendi's kind of under the gun here. Yeah, it's... Uh, I think they're doing pretty well on Secret Station, especially. I thought they were going to do a bit harder, uh, General not getting as much as I thought. And then they actually keeping up. I thought it was also gonna be a bit further behind. But what's getting me a bit worried is bottom lane. I feel like Kess is trying to do oh, weird stuff. I guess he's afraid of Beaver. That's mm -hmm. that's kind of why he's doing this stuff, I think. Because he could definitely contest Pykite in lane. But it, the problem is if Beaver rotates once, he's dead. So that's why he's playing it this way. I, I'm pretty sure that's his reasoning at least. And there's a smoke gank from... Uh, from uh, Navi to top lane, but generally just keep it out after almost getting killed, so not sure if this is going to result in anything. In level 3 CM, first nighttime phase. Just looking at the clock and nothing else, this is something that uh, Secret are going to expect. And so far they've had zero interaction with that CM. Puppy now going to get hit with the Fire Blast and the Frostbite. It is layered a little bit, but it still will be enough to get them first well blood. Drawn by Suneko and the Ogre Magi. So, uh... He is going to be pretty happy with that one. Puppy has been playing a little bit fast and loose. Keizu, I mean, we can see, is, is absorbing the uh, the spin from Pycat pretty well. And with the living armor, he, he is just fine on this bottom lane. And he is, as you said, jumping into action, knowing that there is a very, very small chance that CM jumps all the way from top lane, now straight to bottom. So uh, it is definitely a cautious play made by Kezu, but it's not like it's going to hurt him all that much. He's facing up against Omni Slash, which is a very significant threat, but uh, still gold experience coming in pretty well for the uh, for the shaker of Team Secret. I really wish he went on an Max and Sean Torin Bill, actually. Because if uh, when he's 5 and Jagger is 5 and Jagger stops spinning, and then Kessu has like a pre-charged uh, enchant totem and then like two enchant totem in Pycat's face. He, he could actually get a pretty hilarious kill potentially. But uh, he, he's doing, I think he's doing the safe thing. So, because he he's avoiding the lane because he's afraid of Beaver. And uh, speaking of that person... <laughs> well, good luck up against this. One more spray will kill off the Crystal Maiden. Uh, Ward placed... By Team oh, Secret. Oh, Pycat! Is this the sickest game sense I've seen ever? Okay, never mind. I mean, he was right in his uh, in his assumption. Yeah, but not uh, quite fast enough can't. incoming, which would have been huge. Just getting that free Omni Slash kill on really anyone as a level seven Juggernaut is quite nice. But uh, we'll we'll not get the Earth Shaker, who is pretty darn quick right now, pretty survivable with his Tranquil Boots, and this is just gonna be gunning straight towards that blink. I don't really know if Pycat can do much about that right now. It, it does seem like they need an Ogre or a CM to show up on this bottom lane if they're really gonna lock down the Shaker. Yeah, it's not gonna... if you don't get... if you don't get the kill, you get no points, so... a bit unfortunate there. Kesu is still interesting if we're gonna see some uh, variation. I think uh, a lot of points in Aftershock is generally better. He's getting a good timing for the blink, so I feel like he can leave the two points in Fisher, but could backfire later. So, this is the most interesting thing to watch in my opinion, it's like the most off thing. Uh, and then Bristle as well, but Bristle seems more clear cut, it's gonna be a tank, he's gonna do whatever Bristle does. And he might get a solar quest, he might get a vanguard, he might get a lotus orb, but it's... It, all of those are kinda common, even though the hero is not the most meta hero. And on the Navi side, Legion Commander. Still having a little bit of rough engagement up towards the top lane. A little bit of a, a mid lane swap out now as Yapsor is going to try to leech his level 6. And Navi, they're going to lead the bottom lane devoid of heroes. Pycat you know, might be jungling, figures Keizu, until he sees Pycat and Biver behind him. And this is exactly what he was scared of before. Spin is going to dodge the stun effect, but an Echo Slam is going to destroy the Crystal Maiden. Oh. And the Juggernaut is going to leave. It's like, yo, peace. And Keizu is going to get a free kill. That is uh, Aftershock value right there. With that Echo Slam, of course, and Navi, they definitely underestimated the Shaker there. And now Midwan, the chase after Pycat. Omni Slash and Spin, 
pretty darn powerful. And into the tower, they will call it quits. But uh, that is definitely not how you stop an Earthshaker. If they did that you know, three minutes ago, that probably would have worked. I'm pretty sure that was some kind of misclick or miscommunication because he definitely should have frostbited the uh, Kesvin's domain. Was he afraid of the TP out maybe? But you can't just walk into a, a Shaker when he's under a grip way. You're gonna die if you have 500 HP at that point. So it's not, it wasn't the greatest of decisions. Uh, not the end of the world though. It's still a support that mid one rotated. So it, it's not a huge kill. Uh, net worth is still rel relatively even. and. Uh, He's doing okay in levels. Japso, did he get? Yeah, he didn't get so much mid. I saw he was tiny mid, but he didn't. He didn't really gain that many levels. Yeah, just one level for the Rubik. Not even with the arcane boots farmed up there. So there's a short stint in the jungle for mid one, and maybe he'll just go right back in now that another set of ancients have spawned up, and once again try to give that lane towards the Rubik. But uh, seems like Navi, they're not going to leave well enough alone. Bottom lane, Kezu. Still is, uh, you know, happily farming up this lane. This time has to face up against a new challenger in Dendi. Skewer into RP into a spin. It's another way of making that work, I suppose. Uh, Fissure, Kezu's just so defensively positioned right now. Even has mid one again right next to him. So, rotation from Dendi. Gonna do very little. Though he does have an Iron Talon, he can just go straight into the jungle and really not skip a beat. It is still, uh, it, Kezu drawing a lot of attention onto this bottom lane. That was a really weird rotation by Dende. Like, what did he? How did he think that would end up? Like, he he doesn't have blink or anything, so he has to like walk in and RP Kesser and then skewer him out and maybe skewer in RP, but that's like pretty hard, hard to do. And then the Seeker could just TP in like several people and that could back right. That was a weird rotation. I feel like he probably didn't think it was gonna end up and probably just wanted to maybe force rotations and farm jungle and give. Jugger and power and stuff like that, so it's gonna make. Uh, now we're gonna rotate now. He got the uh, power and Jugger, he's doing a little bit more than maybe Secret expects. And B is playing this very, very, very cocky, I would say, even. Mm -hmm. But it's level 7 Terra Blade. Usually you don't expect this build. He's gonna immediately Sunder, which will absorb the entire Omni Slash. Now Pycat, pretty much already dead, has to back off. That's exactly what MP was looking for, just versus the Legion Commander. They will whiff a Fissure completely. Keizu's still wandering in for an Echo Slam, will hold it for right now. Not willing to use it up against General. Just wants to make a clean retreat. Knowing that Echo Slam will do a lot of damage, but it certainly won't kill. There will be a lot of Navi heroes up towards top lane. They do draw out a lot of mana from that Terror Blade and that Sunder cooldown, but uh, that was that was definitely not the plan. Uh, MP is kind of, uh, kind of Gambit in trying to kill off that Legion Commander with the Sunder. Working out pretty well to save his life, though Navi still looking to go in. Fissure again, not going to do a lot except for stun the Creep Wave. Now the Ogre Magi is going to try to cut in from the back, but only with Biver to help him out. He's going to take an absolute beating here. Overwhelming Odds is going to return a lot of fire back towards Secret, but it's definitely not enough to save the Ogre. They'll shred him, as mid one is also going to make his rotation. Ultimately, like losing the Ogre for that, though, isn't really a terribly huge deal since Secret have been parked with now five heroes up on top lane for quite a long time now. Yeah, they also, mid one actually secured the bottom tower before he tp it, so basically perfect rotations from Secret and uh, General, how you're not getting out of this, right? I am pretty sure there's no way. Smack him! One more quill, there we go. General, at least in theory, can purge that off, but <laughs> that would require a level of press the attack, which currently he does not have. So, uh, yeah, whatever Bristleback throws at you will stick for right now. TP was cancelled over in mid, and Kezu is gonna absorb an Omni Slash and a Fire Blast and a spin. Uh, he does have stick charges, but the spin does so much damage, trying to bait for mid one to come in. And, uh, well, it didn't exactly work out the way he intended, so he'll just give a free one over to the Navi side, but the rest of his teammates in the meantime were, were pushing top lane. So I, I think that is still kind of okay for the team secret side, since they also have the tree and protector. Living armor will yeah, get the tower back up. That might have been like a reason. Like he was, he didn't want to die, obviously. But he's like, okay, if I if I save this tower, it's worth me dying because we might get a counter kill, and it's such a valuable tower. And did he lose gold towards blink? He did. So it wasn't it wasn't like. A, Efficient anyway, but it seems like he's gonna get it a very good timing still. Like it's 30 minutes and he almost picked up the blink. That's a very good timing for an Earthshaker. So I think he's pretty okay with that overall. 
pretty much like 20 minute blink dagger on shaker and you're you're gonna be okay with that any earlier and obviously you're going to be a lot happier and at this point like with 2200 gold it's pretty much just locked up for him top lane still being pushed in by general mid one this bristleback has made quite a few rotations and hasn't really gotten any or a lot off of those rotations necessarily but still hasn't really dropped the that much farm still on top of the net worth chart just uh you know blowing up jungle camps whenever he's uh jumping in between the lanes mid one with the vanguard gonna go for a solar crest shine next a great item to have versus the juggernaut and the legion commander and just you know offensively and defensively it really does it all for the bristleback is still pretty much exactly where he wants to be perhaps mp not as farmed as he would really like but with the farm on the shaker they could definitely just rally around a couple team fights and get this terror blade a little bit of blood for right now they're gonna smoke up and look for an enemy in the jungle. General will General. be that enemy. Lifted up into the clutches of the Super Demon MP. Reflection giving them even more tracking. They get the goo off and General well, will actually get a lucky miss chance. And that might actually save him. They need one more shot. That miss chance up the high ground from MP just cost them that kill. That was clutch. Oh, Kessie got the blink. Oh, too bad. He couldn't commit there. I think mean, he would have backfired. But now he showed the blink, so... Navi knows. I think they should have noticed it. It was. I think. I, I definitely think they saw that. So. They probably know about uh, mm -hmm. Kiss's Blink, which is pretty. It's not bad, but like, you know, you showed your kind of timing, so now Navi can respond properly. And you position properly, then you're not pushing lanes too greedily because you know that there's a Blink Shaker and stuff like that. So. Pretty. Pretty unfortunate for Kiss there. Dendi was pushing the bottom lane all the while. Very quiet performance from this Magnus. Uh, going for, you know, a standard enough build. Uh, Echo Saber after that Iron Talon and Blink Dagger will soon be on the way. Echo Saber with Iron Talon is a pretty disgusting farm rate for this Magnus. So he's pretty much exactly where he wants to be. It does seem like, though, with 7k net worth, a big item in that Echo Saber, just quietly farming is not exactly what you want to do with the Mag. So he will just... You know, farm a little bit more towards that blink dagger, and we'll see what he's able to do with that. But uh, for secrets, it does seem like with this farm on the bristleback, given how seemingly unkillable he is, they can start rallying around him and, and maybe start looking for some fights since they do have that shaker with the blink. I'm surprised Jeff is not trying to steal this uh, blood loss. It's so good on bristle and terabit. Um, can Navi trade towers? They are. They've tried to trade towers for quite some time, but Secret are really adamant about protecting them and uh, trying to heal them up. So, not sure if Navi either they commit everyone or they or they not even don't even try to kill a tower. That's a good ward from Secret. Might save him his life. Pycat does have a level two Omni Slash, but Puppy's gonna split it with MP, but oh, still will fall, and oh. with a crit will get two. Oh my god, level 2 Omni Slash has a lot of damage apparently. Echo Slam is going to completely whiff up against the Blade Fury as well. Keizu doesn't really have that much more game up against the Juggernaut. Decides to kill off the Healing Ward instead. Now the jump in with the Taunt and the duel onto the Rubik. will get them a clutch win as Pycat comes in for a third. And mid one, how the hell did he end up up here? I assume this had to be Dendi. They definitely know about it, right? They're, they don't really have any ranged damage though, so actually killing him off is... Perhaps a different story entirely. Take down the tower first, and now mid one <laughs> trying to fissure him to glitch him down onto the onto the low ground. It seems like they don't know about him, or they're just like leaving I, I him up think there. They but... do. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, this is so weird. This is so bizarre, actually. They're just gonna oh, go yeah, Roche, oh, even though he's like a thousand oh, distance God. away. That's some serious disrespect right there. But he doesn't have a TP. I don't know where this Bristleback actually TP'd to first, but he doesn't have it to get down, so he's just stuck up there. No one has a four staff. No one has any way of glitching God. him down unless the Shaker is gonna find it finally, but he's gonna attempt. He's gonna attempt again. Well, in the meantime, Navi, they they slaughter Secret up on top lane. They essentially delete mid one from the game for a minute about and claim Roshan. Jinna jump in over towards the Rubik in mid, chop him down with Pycat. This juggernaut showing up in a big way. Oh, he's down. Oh, Kessu okay, got it. That was pretty... That was pretty good, actually. That could have been a disaster. That was so weird for uh, Secret there. Like, if they lose the game because of that straight up, that would be insane. But Kessu managed to get him down. Mid one is gonna show himself. Navi, though, still picking up a tower. A ton of kills and Roshan. In as many minutes. And Secret uh, just seems like they were... They were definitely underestimated that Omni Slash 
from the Juggernaut. I don't think uh, you or I figured that was going to be a kill either, but this Juggernaut... I, was... I think that was luck as well. There yeah, was definitely he... luck involved. I think Secret played it. I think they they made pretty good decisions there, what they were doing, but Pike had actually kind of lucked out and managed to kill both. So I, I feel a bit bad for Secret. That, that was definitely a bit of RNG involved. Just being able to focus down MP first in the Omni Slash. Uh, different dice rolls could have meant that uh, you know he kills off Puppy with the Omni Slash, and then MP just sunders Pie Cat, and then it's an even trade of one for one. Uh, but uh, you know what? When you when you're dealing with RNG, obviously skill is a big factor there. So uh, Pie Cat showing off what he can do on this hero. Either way, Secret still with a, a little bit of a disadvantage here. We haven't really seen this uh, Blink Shaker show up to the game yet, but. At the same time, we haven't really seen uh, seen Dendi show up with his Blink Dagger either, so both teams still working with uh, with quite a few assets at their disposal. For right now, mid one with uh, about a trillion armor is going to start bulldozing this bottom lane, although here comes Pycat. Gotta respect that Juggernaut at this stage, especially with the maxed out in power, Manta style, and more stats on the way. Still, mid one's kind of baiting here. How far away is Kezu? Close enough for a Fissure. Blink Echo? No, they're just gonna let Pie Cat spin away. They force out a couple TPs, I guess that's something, but uh, Secret playing this very cautiously on bottom. You can't really commit for an Echo on an Aegis. You're probably losing the fight then. They are still sticking around though. This is pretty cocky. Do they feel like they're this strong? MPP is we'll coming in here. They drop an Observer Ward mid ones. Gotta watch out for the duel. Loses a lot of his fire ability if that's gonna oh, happen. Oh, the skewer back onto the tree protector. They find him. Echo Slam only lands onto the Ogre Magi. That's not good enough. They absorb the Omni Slash pretty good, but now Freezing Field dropped right in the middle. Biver's gonna get a full load off onto mid one, but he's a Bristleback. He just doesn't care. He's gonna get dueled up finally. Can they actually kill off this Bristleback? They won't be able to. With the RP, they finally will. In the meantime, MP and Keizu, they take down the Juggernaut, but that's just his first life. Right with the first back down means that they can't really fight anymore. MP gonna get a really nice thunder off. Now gonna challenge Pie Cat with the reflection, but still takes a lot of magical damage from oh, that spin. So Yapsor gonna return fire with the stolen armor slash. Now a stolen spin. Yapsor showing up to the fight. Spin now onto Dendi, continuing the damage train as Yapsor is gonna get a fade bolt kill. Keizu has another fissure soon. MP is still very healthy somehow in this fight, and they're looking for Suneko. They caught a glimpse of him. Jump forward, looking for the stuns. Fissure is going to stun and wall perfectly onto Suneko and Secret. They turn it around because of all heroes, the Rubik decides that this is going to be the fight where he is going to show off what he can do. General's going to arrive, but he can't do anything by himself. Yapsor carrying Secret through that engagement. Yeah, so well played by Secret. Yeah, oh, I mean, I mean, honestly, I think it was mainly Yapsor. And uh, I think Kesu had a really nice play at the end as well. Also, he, mm -hmm. he whiffed the Echo on uh, Pycat because Pycat got on the slash off in time. But he actually perfectly timed the Fisher off the Omni Slash, right? Insta stun uh, Pycat there, which kind of resulted in uh, Navi not being able to close out the team fight. And then the Absor with the amazing performance at the end as well. That was. was that would look like it was going to be a disaster for Seeker. I thought they were going to lose four, if not five people, but managed to turn it around in a pretty amazing fashion. And Navi might be getting a bit worried. Not sure. Okay, so. General got the Shadow Blade, really wants the Silver Edge against the Bristle later on, might be might be holding it for a bit, because Blade Mill is pretty good here as well. But uh, I wonder if Navi wants to play a bit defensive now, because they lost the fight when they had an Aegis. That's not, that's kind of similar to, kind of, kind of similar to last game where they started losing fights and can only really manage when they had an Aegis. Oh yeah, Absor oh. tries to make a cute play onto Suneko, gets on the slash, and obviously can't steal that one. They're still gonna show up, try to drive a couple heroes away. Dendi with the blink RP skewer at the ready is going to find, oh. unfortunately, only the Shaker, who does not have his ultimate, so they're gonna lose him. Not a huge loss there from Secret as far as continuing the fight, but they will not look to do so. Navi just gonna find a couple of free picks over in the mid lane, and uh, yeah, kind of, it, after all said and done, make it a little bit more of an even exchange across the map. Really, really brave play there from the Rubik. He had a blink dagger. He's feeling really good after the last fight. And then gets Omni Slash in the face. Feels pretty bad, man. But uh, it does seem like Navi, even though they did lose that fight, you know, maybe it just requires uh, a different angle for Dendi. Like that uh, initiation on the puppy was decent, but uh, the RP follow up was rather underwhelming. Puppy scouting on top. I think you will see the Lincoln Sphere, but uh, that's about it. 
Yeah, he got a link and some pack out, which is. Uh, I think I'm. I'm really unsure about this show. I understand that he wants to be able to counter Thunder, but on the other hand, there's like Brisa can just goo him, and then it removes, you know. So there's like. I'm not 100% sold on this. I understand the reasoning behind it, but I, I'm not sure if this was the, the choice, honestly. I think maybe you need to rely on Lotus Orb from your teammates. However, there's no good Lotus Orb carriers. Usually, maybe the offlaner gets Lotus Orb in these cases, but there's a Legion in your team, so he's not really suitable for that. So, uh, uh, this this could be great or could backfire a bit. I'm not really sure. So, we're gonna keep an eye out on that. But, uh, I feel like Secret are struggling a little bit with one thing, which is, I think it's a classic bristle problem where he's kind of, he's kind of kited and ignored and doesn't do enough, because he can he doesn't really, he doesn't have a way of to force people to focus him, other than just run straight in, and then like it's pretty hard to to be in the perfect position where you're close enough to your team, but not too deeply mm -hmm. committed, so you have to be in like some super sick sweet spot, so, and even then there's like skewer and stuff, and then Jewel is also great against that, so. It's pretty hard, I think, for bin one to have the performance he needs to. El Sol Karas will definitely help that in the future. Quick blink out from Yapsor. It will keep him safe from any dual shenanigans from Na'Vi. Uh, just getting a Hyperstone component from the Bristleback definitely will increase his threat by by quite a bit, especially when you focus someone down with that shine effect of the Solar Crest. Uh, but for right now, just getting the Plate Mail is a super tank, but it's just not worth Na'Vi's time. What is worth Na'Vi's time is going towards mid lane, Pycat with the Cleave. Be uh, destroying this tower in a hurry. Minor split push from Secret, but uh, nothing really relevant in the grand scheme of things. A little bit of a momentum down towards bottom, and with the line drawn from Soniko, it seems like they are uh, looking for a secondary tower here. Pycat's gonna jump back. He can deal with this bottom lane, but now for Secret, I would not be surprised at all if they just start started rallying the troops. They did get a glimpse of everyone moving up here for Navi. They know that. Pycat just left, so now's the best time for Secret to start an engagement, and oh no, not the CM. Well, she's super dead. She did use her Midas, though, and she has a Midas, there's also that, but uh, it is going to be a free pick for Secret. Uh, that, that's pretty, I think that's a very good trade for Navi, honestly. They have the uh, free core farm with uh, power, they make Secret rotate three and four people to kill a CM. That's that's pretty valuable for now, but they're definitely gonna get the better network exchange for that. Mid one is getting Daisy, like you mentioned earlier. I wanna see what his next item is. There's... I've seen some Ags bristle, but it doesn't seem like the best game. I'm not sure, I, I'm assuming press attack removes the goo completely. Mm -hmm. That should be the interaction, I'm not certain though. So, yeah, and then there's spin and stuff like that, so it doesn't seem like the best choice ever. So I'm probably not gonna see that. Kesu got a four step going Shadow Blade, no agonims from him. And not too much interesting stuff going on. Puppy got the Midas earlier, Beaver got the Midas, and uh, pretty standard item choices except the uh, Lincolns on Pikeard, I'd say. So far, it hasn't done anything for him. Minor regeneration, whatnot, but uh, yeah, it, it's whatever so far. Mostly because there's just been no fights. But the Assault Caress is done on the Bristleback, now Omni slashing him, dueling him. You may get rid of that uh, passive Bristleback skill, but uh, you still won't be able to get through 30 some odd armor from the Bristleback with damage reduction, with evasion. It, it's definitely going to be tough, and uh, with the Vanguard, if you're talking about increasing your threat and Abyssal Blade is a very easy build up for the Bristleback, uh, very logical given how he's already started, but it does seem like he just needs to get some sort of fat damage item. And maybe that's not going to be what he really wants to do. Leave that towards the Terra Blade, who's obviously going to go pure damage almost every single game. But uh, 500 gold, Bristleback is working with quite a lot right now. And is going to see Roshan. Navi. I think, they, I think they just counted this as well. So both sides should know that Rosh is the next big thing. Yeah, so a lot comes down to this Roche now. I think this is one of the, might be the biggest fight uh, in this entire game. And the vision advantage, it's pretty lackluster for both teams, I guess. Lincolns, save Juggernaut over in mid from a Telekinesis. Oh. It's yeah. something. I mean, it's kind of nice in that, like, you can feel a bit safer. So uh, there's definitely some merit for the item. Yeah. He wants this butterfly so badly right now. They do not want to fight Secret, but Secret are forcing it right now. This could be a pretty good timing 
Oh, the smoke is going to be blown mostly on General. They'll jump in towards Dendi instead. Steal and power, and Dendi's going to be focused down. General is going to pick a fight with MP. Bad idea, dude. Soneko obviously showing up to help out, and now is going to regret his decision as well. MP feasts to get a double kill. The rest of Na'Vi, PyCat, Fiver, thinking about going for Roche with a double damage. Rune. Normally what you want to do, exactly, but now they have to sack it and give it over towards Secret. And that is a perfectly forced fight, and Yapsor got away with quite a nice spell to steal. You don't really need that much in the way of damage items when your Bristleback is empowered, when MP is empowered. With an Aegis, this is actually a pretty big opening here for Secret. Yeah, that was... Oh, Navi made, they made a split second call to fight that, uh, then they blinking in to help out, and then uh, also uh, General could just run out with Shadowplay, but they made a split second call to fight and that cost them a lot this game, it's uh, it's looking very bad now, MP got Aegis, he used meta at least, so there's something there, but this tower is going down very fast, they have RP when they spawn, so that's their timing. My cat gonna spin, just trying to soften up MP. They do fire blast, Bristleback is gonna show his back now to General, lift him up, just to try to disengage. And it looks like that should be successful, though General has another blink right now. Diving in that far will be awfully risky. He is still invisible right now, I don't think he's spotted by anyone until he jumps in, looking for MP, but the man style is gonna get MP a little bit distant, still overwhelming odds, is there, Sunder is gonna be casting out, General has a turn, tail, and run, off in the back mid one, is distracting a full three heroes, and he's just driving them away, forcing them to try to attack him, daring them to do so, but they're not gonna take that bait, Yapsor will fall as Pycat is going to get his Omni Slash off, now picking a fight with MP, jumped in from Dendi, RP completely off the mark, MP already used the Sunder though, where is his backup, Hurricane Pike another five seconds, but he will get nuked down, the slow provided to him by the Crystal Maiden. Secret, Kezu, and Mid One. They effectively drove away a couple of heroes, but ultimately, Navi were able to get around these two and get to the soft underbelly of the Terror Blade. The damage over in mid kills off a tier 3, which is going to open up shrines, but Melee Racks will survive. Yeah, some uh, pretty good defense from Navi. I think Secret, they really wanted the Rax and they, they were killing it really fast, but they kind of realized they can't, and then they had no good way of escaping. Uh, really good. I mean, I, I thought then they actually played really well at the start. He, he was about to get stunned, hot picky B, and they could bring forward to kill Terrorblade, but with the RP, which was very unfortunate. But it, it didn't really matter, actually, because they got the kill, so, you know, that's at least something positive. And I think Navi can defend the shrines very well, so I don't think it's the end of the world that they lost after tier 3. Terrorblade is, is very good at killing shrines, so you're signing illusions, but they, I think they can deal with it pretty well. Navi, do complete this Juggernaut's Butterfly. General really struggling to find some opportunities in that last fight. Uh, it does seem like this Legion Commander uh, really starting to... Uh, decrease in her effectiveness as long as she's not able to find the bristleback and that is going to be kind of what she's teching for as you mentioned silver edge and the duel makes bristleback uh, at least vulnerable for the navi side but uh, general if he's not doing that is going to be uh you know not really providing all that much right click damage for navi all it seems like most of the damage if not all the damage is gonna be coming out of pie cat with the butterfly and the empower and the bloodlust all of which is maxed out at this point yeah, he is hitting very very hard but it seems like he might just be the only person on navi who's hitting very hard. Although, Dendi has something to say about that. Orchid on the Magnus. He could start building into some serious DPS as well, and that just might be unexpected for Secret. Oh, if Navi commits here, Secret are not in position to defend this right now. But they are, I, I, it's too risky. Yeah, yeah, for sure. This is such a risky high ground attack, and they at least force uh, everyone from Secret back, so they know that Secret are here, and they can then split up and form, which is... A pretty common play nowadays that you, you play like that, and it's pretty good as well. Unfortunately, they not, did not get the tier 3, so they cannot kill shrines. And, uh, I'm not sure what team want to force it right now. I feel like both teams are very scared of fighting. As well they should. The RP, the Omni Slash, these X Factors for Na'Vi. Definitely meeting the, uh, oh, the impact of a Trim Protector or a Shaker. They'll find the tree, and speaking of, skew him back, Orchid should pop him, and it will. That's the damage that Magnus can do. Granted, it is just a support tree and protector with no defensive items whatsoever. But uh, the small amount of slows from the Skewer, from the Echo Saber, just the raw damage output with the Empower. He's hitting 200 a pop. That is no small amount from a Magnus, who usually is just a pure utility hero. 
this game is going to build in some uh, pretty significant damage. Now, killing off Treant isn't really going to impact Secret all that much, but it is going to still force them to go back into the base knowing that they can't really take a fight until they have everyone grouped up. So Navi have the run of the map, at least for right now. Yeah, I wonder how much pop thought Poppy uh, took into that, because he knows that there's no Roche, so if he dies, there's no... Navi can't Roche, you know? And Navi can't really high ground, so I think he was kind of like, okay, I need to ward deep. So, um, and if I die here, there's nothing they can gain. Like, they don't really gain anything except a kill on me. So, if that is the line of thought, he's, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's very smart, which he is, for sure. So, I, I would be very interested to know, like, if, the, if he fought that for him. And, can't really ask him though, but it's pretty interesting how how it didn't matter at all almost him dying. Mm -hmm. Just getting some gold. The the uh, potential benefit of, of scouting out a couple of heroes, potentially smoking up or seeing a new item or something like that, is is still going to end up giving Navi a little bit of gold and onto the Magnus no less, who is going to be building into some relevant DPS. But uh, again, it, it does seem like it's just a kill for kill's sake and not that much else. So. A valuable scouting move, perhaps, by Team Secret. Navi now gonna group up around bottom lane. Secret just now oh, pick Bachelor. up an Abyssal on Bristleback. Abyssal, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that That's is a pretty, uh, pretty big item. It's a, it's a pretty big item to keep hidden as well. Just that surprise oh, stun. Pycat is gonna see it. They'll run into each other, but there goes the Lincoln Sphere effect. Nasal Goo, a pretty nice trash spell to throw in towards that Lincoln's. Puppy, looking for Dendi, will root him down. There is. A lot of help oh, here, though, so for the scared. Magnus. is just going to hold his BKB. The secret yeah, will, uh, will kind of call good. Nobby's bluff. I think both teams were so scared to, like, really commit. The puppy kind of overgrowth to hoping that they can kind of commit, but there's no heroes that can... I don't think there's any hero on the secret that can commit on a hero like that to try and... There's not enough damage, you know, except mm -hmm. MP, but MP can't just walk and start attacking. Uh, a Magnus in, when he's that close to his team. Uh, they smoked up behind Pika here. So, and Secret are defending. They're smoked up as well. Oh no, they just tweet this, but uh, Legion Commander in the area jumps in for the duel onto the Bristleback. How much damage can they actually do? It seems like an irrelevant amount. He's just not dying. Although finally we'll go down. We'll get Sunder by MP. Still taking a lot of DPS here with the Abyssal Blade. We'll survive. Oh, Dandy whips another RP. No, Dendi, why? Off in the back, they will isolate and kill off Puppy, but now the chase is on. Secret so gonna jump forward, Fissure onto two. Not gonna do all that much for Keizu, who's kinda stuck in the trees. They're gonna instead try to go for the Magnus, lift him up in the reflection, and with the right clicks from MP, will take him down. And ultimately, it's only one hero to go down a piece. That was a clutch move from that Terror Blade there, and, and finally, Navi land that proper counter, use the duel just to enable that Bristleback damage, but it's still just not enough. He's still with Vanguard, AC, and, and Solar Crest. Yes. I think Jorgenov was stunned for the for the beginning of the duel. I think if he managed to get off the Omni Slash instantly, mm -hmm. he would have died even though the swap came out, but another missed RP, and it's kind of becoming a trend almost this game, where he's, he's kind of he's needing to hit his RPs, and that's the game-winning ultimate in the fights as well. Uh, generally it's like the initiation to to force uh, like defensive sunders and stuff, you know, like if, if MP uses sunders to save mid one, that's like already a one duel in a way. And But then Puppy can't really follow up here, like he's missing three or... I think he missed three RPs in a row actually, if I'm not wrong. So Something like that. Needs, needs to step up for sure if Navi wants to win this game, but they're still in a good position. They're in a... I think overall the game is in their favor, but they're just missing that one component in the team fights. Well, with no RP, there is also no Echo Slam in the last fight for Secret. Shaker really struggling to find a good access point in, since everyone in the front was was magic immune, and uh, Shaker at the tail end of it, Fissure into no follow up. Again, you know, there's not much that he can do. So you know, there are still a lot more assets to be had here for both sides. But it is, is kind of troubling to see Dendi have have this much trouble. Like, at least he's, he's uh, been working with a lot of damage right now. He can just slap an Orchid on someone, pop a BKB, and start right-clicking people, and still have an impact on these fights. But he's going to go for a fresher orb, so he can, you know, maybe land some of these RPs. Still not there yet, but uh, if Dendi keeps playing like this, it will be, as you said, really difficult for Navi to uh, come together in these engagements and actually claim a win. But still, they're working with a little bit of a net worth lead right now. Roshan's going to be up soon, though. And for both sides, they are going to be scouting the pit. A ton of illusions. 
secret want to fight this? Navi. They trickle in one at a time. That's really risky. I think uh, the biggest thing for them is like if he like you can miss RPs, but like if you as long as you like can forget about it and like just keep playing, like you mm -hmm. you don't even remember missing RPs, you like play normally. Then I think he's gonna be able to perform here. But if he's like always think, oh I missed my last RP, like I need to land the next one, and like I need to, I need to, then it's gonna be become a very hard game for Navi, I think. So, but he's a very experienced player, so I think he's I think he's gonna be able to keep his had cool here. Yeah, Dendi's been around forever. He's played in the biggest of stages and he's played Magnus a ton so you know, all, all evidence would suggest that Dendi should be able to contribute an RP to the next Dyer's engagement but hey man two three missed RPs the, the, the track record at least in this game not really working out but uh, either way Navi gonna stick around that Roche pit. Terrible Illusions gonna filter in Pycat He's got to slaughter that one, my god. He has a fresh MKB now, this Juggernaut, so he is working with an absolute truck ton of DPS. Although, if he gets stunlocked by, say, a Blink Echo Slam, it may just not matter. Keizu does have Invis, Shadow Blade, they do see Pycat. Are they going to jump? Not enough heroes in position. It would have been just Keizu committing in. Oh, they're going to jump into a Pycat MP. He's going to lose most like half HP just from nothing. Gets a Reflection now, that will destroy Pycat's health pool. Fissure's there as well, mid one. Gonna chase forward, looking to force some sort of reaction here from Navi, but they are playing it cool. They will let PyCat back off and commit pretty much nothing to that engagement. Yeah, they they, they had some kind of kind of plan there with uh, the initiating on PyCat. I'm not sure what it was. It, it didn't end up being how they wanted to, but uh, definitely are not afraid to kind of try and blow PyCat up. They have a lot of lockdown if they can manage to get Earthshake. I mean, Earthshake is. Like the hero with the most lockdown in the game, more or less. Uh, Pycat is destroying this road right now. Mid one is gonna show himself off. He doesn't have to worry about that duel. Will show his back right now. There's the duel and the Omni Slash still bouncing through. Once again, the Sunder is there to get him a little bit extra HP, but he's still taking so much damage. Where's the help here for mid one? MP is gonna get up onto the hill. They'll overgrowth fail oh, it. No, There's the RP that we needed. Dendi comes in huge with an RP onto three. We'll kill all three of those heroes. And the fourth, Keizu was taken care of by General. I assume dual win? No, not quite, but Dendi was uh, was saving all those RPs for that one right me, there. Yeah. And now PyCat is just going to blow up the mid lane. And oh no, what are you doing here, Rubik? Had a TP scroll, decided to blink over the trees, and now hit with the Ignite, silenced. He is fairly screwed here. And he's going to make it a full not... five-man wipe for Na'Vi. This might just be the game. No one There's has buyback. single buyback. And right, Na'Vi, do they know PyCat is... Heading for pro, I think they know actually somehow. That, yeah. Oh, they were gonna buy back actually. So one buyback, but I am. There's a duel up as well. If he gets close again, get duel and blown up. I am pretty sure. There's just there's just too much damage here. Navi, Pycat is just way too farmed with the empower with the steroids. That yeah, yeah, even if mid one walks into it right now, no one cares. Just focus down the ancient, and they're gonna claim a win. Wow. What a finish. 